Today, I'll be just sort of like representing the entire continent. I mean, after that, I have over 54 countries. And I'm just going to sum up like this, how we do our advocacy from our perspective. And I hope that it will be impactful as it should, just like in other, every other talk that has been done before I me. Mean, so allow me to start by saying, so like access to vital insulin, diabetes supplies, those are the things that we're usually advocating for. Diabetes supplies, medical, should not be complicated as diabetes is. So these are, like, I'll share, like, briefly some of the things on how we advocate, especially in Africa. In Africa. So we raise diabetes awareness through mostly through our social media platforms because usually going on the streets like we usually see in the United States is a bit toxic. African, the politics in Africa is a bit toxic. We seen like, outside working with a partner, I think you can actually be arrested for that. So we usually take advantage of our social media platforms, working that. The police makers that we're trying to check them whenever we are posting things to raise awareness so that even our networks, not just people living with diabetes, but even our friends, because we had friends who had a life before the diabetes, are hoping that we're seeing whatever that we're going to be posting, they're going to be held because you'll be saying like basic information, what diabetes is, how you feel, that kind of thing. Also, like sharing with our own experiences on before we go diagnosed. What we were thinking at first. I mean, people usually appreciate that because they can actually relate to say, I think I might be diabetic. Maybe I have to go see, go to a pharmacy, get tested, that kind of thing. And also, some of the things that we do is we visit schools, local clinics, training even healthcare providers, because not only are uh, like the general public not aware, but even especially the healthcare provider, especially from the less remote areas, like rural areas. They're not really aware about diabetes. So as part of the people like is working with organizations within our own countries, we are also like part of the team that goes on to clinics, visiting clinics, um, taking advantage on every community gathering, speaking about diabetes, so that everybody who is part of it can actually benefit something. Even I mean being really appreciated, especially the nature. Which of course I think they might have been spending with the general information. So much about the idea because it's specific. So, like something that is uh, like true today or true tomorrow might not be true like maybe next year because things are changing. So many researches are being done. So we take advantage of even the conferences that we attend, the information that is just incredible. And it's actually a shock to see that I'm maybe I might be the only one, or maybe say less than 20 people from Africa attending that conference. So it's actually exciting because it's actually only the uh, patient advocates and not in order to provide us, but that we wish they should be part of these faculty attending, learning, I mean, improving their skills so that they can actually help us to live a very good quality life with whatever that is they're going to be sharing with us. And further, some of the things that we do is we do our, we also launch a petition. Um, we'll be appealing to our local government officials in respect to the cause of diabetes because in our case, we have seen like some of the People, they can actually get diagnosed during post mortem. Those are things that are still real, they're still happening, and it helps us, especially as the people that are living with diabetes, to see that, like, even our communities, yes, we have people living with diabetes, we are talking about this, but it's just people are not really aware. Nothing is being sort of like our impact is not being noticed because people are not willing to speak up and maybe just we could raise the voice together. I can for them, it's not really. Right? I mean, we are trying to change that narrative because it is really so. And how can I say, like, how is this that work is, or how is it helping? We do not say that it has helped, but it is helping because it is an ongoing process. We cannot say that if we have not reached the goal, our objectives, like where we want to really to go. So education, what I believe is education, what we believe in Africa is education helps to alleviate, it helps to alleviate that exists within the community because the people might think like if I get in touch, if I get in contact with someone living with diabetes, I might also get diabetes. Or if I share an object or if I share anything with someone with diabetes, I might get diabetes. So like those are the things that we're trying to say, like, hey, someone has done something is not like yes, I might not have to share like so compare diabetes with any other uh, non-communicable disease. It's not sort of like, it's not contagious. Those are the things that we're trying to share with people so that, because hey, if you see those things, everyone, anyone can be at least, you can actually get in pieces. It's not like you must have done something because that one is.
part of like to say what might have caused the type of diabetes. I mean, nobody knows yet, but we are hoping that with all the researches that are being done with our collaboration, people working together, we can actually go somewhere. So also sharing through our personal experience, I believe that it also helps. This is something that is helping to change the narrative. Because like when we, even with the International Diabetes Federation, because as you heard, as I speak right now, there is a call, the call for action, that is being sent, like if you just um, are willing to share your perspective, to sign that um, that call for action, that, that was launched by the International Diabetes Federation, to help us, it will help us to raise the diabetes education so that our health care or our minister within our national, within in our countries, can actually see those things that are actually being done in the global perspective. And I believe that we should continue to initiate such initiatives, collaborate, getting in, getting together and working together with those uh, international organizations. We can actually um, raise, help to raise awareness because awareness is not something that spread out like people are not really aware because they're still living because as it is as I speak right now, according to the International Diabetes Federation, they say that about sixty four percent of people living with diabetes in Africa are undiagnosed. So like I think Africa with all the seven regions that IDF has uh, across the globe, in Africa Africa is only has the biggest number. Actually that is sad because people are not really uh, in this together. People are sort of like fighting, people are sort of like community organization, there is sort of like a decentralization. We should have something that is combined, we should be coming up together, but it's something that people like are sort of like fighting. Uh, and then so even to get things to sort of like having like a sort of like a common goal, the things that you always out, it's not really known, it's not really being practiced because people they sort of like want to fight over the uh, for their own ambition. But not the thing. it's uh, so more so the big pharma I believe the big farmer is well aware of the training being hatched, which is this one for all. And since 2014, and I think like almost the diabetes, the diabetes community, they're coming up together to sort of like raise their voices together to demand that we should have like proper access to health care. Because insulin, as I speak right now, even in Africa, you can actually hear that like if a person or a parent with someone living with cyber and diabetes, when they go to the hospital, they can actually be prescribed or a doctor can actually give them to certify. This is okay. You can actually go to metformin. Like, you do not have like a type one diabetic patient that you need to use, like, sort of like metformin, a drug that is meant or a tablet that is meant for people living with cyber diabetes. We still have these cases in Africa. It's not just a matter of misdiagnosis, but even a wrong medication because this is expensive. So I believe that, like, if we do continue to come up together, even we can have this thing for being realized in not just in Africa but the world wide right? because insulin is a bit expensive and we the right thing. So what are some of the challenges that we are facing as people in Africa? And I believe so we might even share like we share the same sentiments. Those are the things that like we believe like even in the outside globe globally, these are some of the challenges as a people. One lack of support from the reliable diabetes organization. Civil society are not supposed to be like the civil society or organization that are supposed to be coming up together and uniting people who want to stand on like one voice. They are fighting, as I say, as I mentioned. They are not coming up together. They want to be like, like we cannot have sort of like organizations, five different organizations in the same country, each advocate for the same thing, but then they are not together. They are all um, sort of like calling for donation. From the same organization, but then how can you call like for five different like yeah? There should be one voice. There should be one voice. We believe like diabetes is one. We are the one symbol. We should all be united for diabetes. So some of the challenges that we're facing, and it is therefore extremely difficult to get resources together and fight on a common goal because of this. I don't know. Like I think it just exists in Africa. I don't believe like this can actually be happening with our support. <laughs> Believe that if we do come up together as a collective, as a one voice, we can achieve that. We can deal away with all these problems, the challenges that we're facing. How do I think, right? How can we sort of like uh, overcome these challenges that we are facing right now? I believe it is extremely, yes, of course, I believe it is extremely difficult to have all these organizations to work together. But I think that, like, in the case, let's say, for example, this organization is sort of like doing 
uh, raising awareness for diabetes because I believe if you continue to do that, people would appreciate you never know who you're speaking to. You might be speaking to the same people, even people living with diabetes. It's not just the people in general public that need this awareness. Even people living with diabetes, they are still doing some of the things because they are not really going to get to their door. What it views because of money issues, financial burden. So everyone needs to like have this awareness. We need to continuously speak and encourage others so that we collaborate, come up together, and just be one voice. I believe if as a one voice, I think we can go somewhere. And also, as I always say, um, we really need to get involved. We need to get involved and come up together. Or sort of like to create the change that we need. And in my honest opinion, I think that people within the international diabetes community should join forces. Yeah, true, true, true. True, yeah. It's it's a it's a world cry that everyone should come forward for this, isn't it? Yes. So like one I would last would like to share about like how I sort of like did my own advocacy network. This is the last item that I'm speaking about, and I believe I'm not part of that assumption because I was speaking fast. And I apologize if anyone yeah. has failing to get me correctly. So I got involved with uh, the Bobby Davis profession like three years after my diagnosis because they just like in the court. No, no, you have, hello? Okay. You can hear me? Okay. It was it was really nice like you have really touched various challenges you face in Africa. 